welcome to the 11th episode of the SCC online weekly rewind where we curate the most important and interesting stories to keep you abreast of the latest developments in the field of law hi i am nilofa bhuteja and in this week i have brought highlights of some recent significant updates of the supreme court the high courts and the legislation updates let us begin with some news of the supreme court In an important verdict the Supreme Court has upheld the legality of the notification dated 15th November 2019 and has held that the approval of resolution plan does not ipso facto discharge a personal guarantor to a corporate debtor of her or his liabilities under the contract of guarantee the court said that the parliamentary intent was to treat personal guarantors different from other categories of individuals and therefore the impugned notification does not amount to impermissible and selective application of provisions of the insolvency and bankruptcy code the allahabad high court was informed by the state that directions for forming the pandemic public grievance committee had been given by the state on 13th may commenting on an incident where a patient who had fainted in the washroom of a medical college and unfortunately he could not be revived and his body was disposed of by the hospital as an unidentified body the court came down heavily on the state and observed that if this was the state of affairs of treatment at a medical college in a city like meerut then the entire medical system of the state pertaining to the smaller cities and villages can only be taken to be like a famous hindi saying ram bharose the court also gave various suggestions to the state to improve its vaccination rate and its health infrastructure the bombay high court expressed its displeasure on the casual attitude of the authorities in complying with the court's orders and criticized the strategy that was adopted by the state government for allocation of remdesivir drug to the hospital the court said that the allotment of the remdesivir drug appears to have been made on a functional bed capacity of each of the hospital whether such allocation would actually cater to the needs of the patient has not been explained to the court holding that there should not be a serious dispute between a married couple for seeking a divorce by mutual consent the chatisgarh high court has held that a couple may seek divorce by mutual consent even in the absence of any quarrel or dispute and in such a case it is not for the court to search for a ground or a reason what for which has compelled the parties to seek divorce by mutual consent in another interesting case on domestic violence the delhi high court has held that the short durational visits or stay of a daughter in law at the house of the parents in law would not get the house a color of being a shared household in another case bail was granted by the guwahati high court to the renowned assamese writer sikha sharma in connection with the sedition case lodged against her for posting controversial facebook post regarding the death of 22 crpf jawans in an anti naxal operation In another interesting case the Kerala High Court has directed the local registrar to register the marriage of a couple living in Israel through virtual mode the couple got married in 2020 and both of them were working in Israel due to the high due to the covid-19 pandemic the couple was unable to travel back to india and their marriage and get the marriage registered before the local registrar in a case where a married couple was living separately for 25 years the madras high court has held that not granting a decree of divorce would be disastrous for the parties stating that a human problem can be properly resolved by adopting a human approach 
the court said that preservation of a ruined marriage was totally un unworkable deciding on the rights of children in conflict with law the orissa high court has held that while the juvenile justice act distinguishes between children below and above 16 years of age with regard to inquiry however it does not do so for the purposes of bail the court held that the bail of both categories of children in conflict with law is to be considered as per the mandate of section 12 of the act after two back to back orders which refused to grant protection to two live-in couples calling live-in relationships morally unacceptable the punjab and haryana high court granted protection to a third live-in couple who were under the threat of physical harm by their own family the court said that the live-in relationships are neither prohibited nor to the amount to any commission of any offense and that live-in couples are entitled to equal protection of law as any other citizens of the country the government of delhi has directed principal employers employing or having employed during the last 12 months workers through outsourcing to compulsory register with the labor department through the e district portal of the government of delhi the ministry of consumer affairs Food and Public Distribution has notified the Consumer Protection E-Commerce Amendment Rules of 2021 on May 17. These rules amend the Consumer Protection E-Commerce Rules of 2020. The amendment makes it mandatory for the commerce entity to appoint a nodal officer or an alternative senior designated person to ensure compliance under the act or rules. Now let us come to the covid updates. The central government in its continuation of its commitment to address the hardship that is being faced by various stakeholders on account of the severe covid-19 pandemic has on consideration of representations received from various stakeholders decided to extend the timelines for the compliance under the income tax act of 1961. due date for furnishing of the return of income for the assessment year 2122 which is 31st july 21 2021 has been extended to 30th september 2021 due date of furnishing of report of audit under any provision of the act for the previous year 2020 2021 which is 30th september 21 is extended to 31st october 2021 due date of furnishing of return of income for the assessment year 2021 which is 31st october under subsection 1 of section 139 of the act has been extended to 30th november the national expert group of vaccine administration for covid-19 necvac has issued fresh recommendations regarding covid-19 vaccinations with the union ministry of health and family welfare individuals having lab test proven covid-19 illness their vaccination has been deferred by 13 months sorry by 3 months after recovery covid-19 patients who have been given anti sars monoclonal antibodies or plasma in their case the vaccination is deferred by 3 months from the date of discharge from the hospital individuals who have received at least the first dose and got covid-19 infection before completion of the dosing schedule in their case the second dose should be deferred by 3 months after clinical recovery from covid-19 illness persons with any other serious general illness requiring hospitalization or icu care should wait for 4 to 8 weeks before getting the covid-19 vaccine